guest uh, today is, um, well, to be honest, mate, he's a remarkable fella. Um, I'm, I think we should be really honoured to have him on. Um, he is a Gurkha soldier. Yep. He grew up in uh, the foothills of the Himalayas, joined the Gurkhas at the age of 19, which is no mean feat. But then he came over to England and became one of the first ever Gurkhas, and there's not many of them even now, to pass SAS selection. Uh, and he served uh, for nearly 20 years in the SAS, uh, at which time I think he became one of the chief instructors for Mountain Troop, which is one of the troops there. He's one of the world's top high altitude mountaineers. He's an expert skier, but now he's come out. He uh, has set up an adventure company, um, which takes uh, veterans um, who have neurodegenerative uh, illnesses, such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, uh, also um, double above the knee amputees, people with post-traumatic stress disorder, blind people, um, up mountains such as Mount Blanc, um, up to the summit of Everest, um, and all over the place. He is a truly remarkable, I think is the word individual. I think you're going to love this guy. Um, I really do. I, I, I can't wait to see how you're going to get on. Um, but his name is Krishna Thapa. And if we can do anything through this podcast uh, to get his name out there and to help him continue with the fantastic work he's doing, um, it will be it will be really wonderful if we can do that. But he's got so many interesting stories to tell and is quite unique in terms of former SAS soldiers because he's not coming out to, when he's, he's come out of the regiment now. He's not talking about war and fighting, but having grown up in, in the foothills of the Himalayas and been a former Buddhist monk, um, he's talking about the spiritual path. Um, and links between, well, I suppose it's like the old crusades, the warrior saints, um, yeah, the, the, warrior uh, monk. That, the warrior monk. That's right. That, that kind of fusion between fighting and the spiritual path. So um, I can't wait to, to see what you make of him. I think you're going to get on like a house on fire. Um, but I think without any further ado, mate, um, uh, Chris Krishna Thapa. Welcome to Psycho Schizo Espresso. It's a real honour to have you on here. Well, Chris, look, welcome uh, to Psycho Schizo Espresso. It's wonderful to have you, mate. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, first of all, namaste, Bruce and Kevin. Uh, it's been my pleasure and honour to be uh, meet you guys here, and which I never dreamed of. So it's a new chapter. And uh, it's been truly and uh, uh, my great and very exciting to see you here, Bruce. You've got an amazing story, mate. I mean, obviously, uh, you started off as a uh, growing up as, as, a, as a little boy in, a, in the foothills of the Himalayas, joined the Gurkhas, first Gurkha to pass um, uh, selection for 2-2 SAS Regiment, Special Air Service Regiment uh, in the UK. Um, now um, one of the world's top high altitude mountaineers and you run an adventure company um, taking people with, with neurodegenerative um, illnesses, PTSD, uh, mental health issues um, up Everest and other mountains around the world. It really is a truly inspirational story and it's um, I think Bruce will agree it's an honour for us to have you on here as well. Um, it really is. But I thought what I'd do is um, I don't know much about the Gurkhas, to be honest, and I don't really know much about um, Nepali culture. So I thought I'd start off by asking you, I mean, what was your early life like? What's it like growing up in in like a, well, I mean, what was it, a small Himalayan village, I suppose? Yes, absolutely. I think, uh, first of all, uh, uh, you know, born in the uh, in kind of uh, Himalayas and culture, uh, what I found is the because Nepal still the Nepal is the only country in the world which is the eighty five percent of people is still go to the temple and, and follow the ritual, uh, follow the traditional, and also the incomes of you know like geographically if you look from sea level to the highest you know in the world or in on the earth, the Everest. 
I think because of that, we have got the diverse, you know, uh, both, you know, psychologically, phys phys physically, and also the uh, living creature, not only human, you know, so much diverse mm. in it. And also that we are very, I would say, the culture and traditional. Uh, first of all, I, I, born, I born in the uh, jungle because of my uh, traditional, I was not allowed to born in my mom house. So they drag oh, me out, oh. yeah, because that's the culture and traditional you know, we we still have in the mountain. Uh, it's 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 very interesting, Kevin, because now obviously being here last thirty years and you know doing whatever again with the you know like uh, you know with the science and catching off now, my path is to find out all the culture and traditional. What's that to me? To me, right? So. Okay. Um, so I think uh, being Nepal is again uh, I I born in the about two thousand meter born in the jungle because of traditional again I couldn't born in a mom house. So you're not allowed to be born in your mother's house. That's a tra Nepali tradition, is it? Yes. Wow. So uh, basically, Kevin, I think what I found was the uh, interesting is this all about the you know when I born which uh, planet was signing on that day. And also the uh, when oh, when okay. when talk about the mom and dad, it's 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 not the you know like it's not the uh, um, gender problem. I think more sort of energy, how the energy mm. come to a young soul, okay. young body, mm. and uh, everything with the Eastern philosophy or the Netflix culture is how can we enhance not only the physical. But also the you know like emotional, psychological, the okay. energy, energy right. path. So where we where we facing, and it's very fascinating. I I found that uh, so because of that traditional, we we had to born in the certain conducive environment because mm. I am more sort of with the dad DNA, you know because of that they want to preserve that that side of you know more sort of male dominate with the energy perspective uh more scientific way so chris a, a, a question then and, and it, it, it's it, it's quite personal i mean straight off the bat as it were um because you're in an environment in which in which you're dealing with the genesis or not the genesis even with the the emergence of a soul yes right uh, and that soul is being imbued with planetary influences at the moment of birth or at the moment of conception or somewhere in, in between there. I'm not quite sure what, what, where exactly in, in the thing. Um, obviously, that's part of, part of the, the culture. Um, do you personally believe that it's that it's true that it's true uh or or is it or are you having a kind of out of the body experience when you view your culture going this is great it works it's uh it, it's it's really rather wonderful and beautiful but it's a really rather wonderful fairy tale or do you believe do you or do you believe in it? I mean, no, no judgmental call either way, really. But. No, I think that's a great question, Bruce. I think yes, I believe. Uh, first of all, I think because I I grown up as a monk, you know, like uh, in the Himalayas, doing you know from the you know when I'm three years old, because I was the eldest son in the in the mountain. My dad was always walking, you know, like all dads does. And being first eldest son, I had to follow the every morning 4 a.m. 4 a.m. wake up, cold shower, change the dress to the red, to the white, according to the pattern of the, you know, astro, astro related. Then I have to worship the dog, worship the stone, worship the, you know, worship the tree and worship sun and moon. And then later on, uh, this obviously gone before I joined in the Gurkhas age of, you know, like 19 years. and. And once I then obviously fast forward, you know, being a Gurkhas and SF, and in maybe about ten years before, it intrigued me in the war zone. When 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 we did, were on the mission in Afghanistan, one of the goal, thirteen years old goal, come and hold my hand on the target in Afghanistan, and and he she asked me why. Mm. 
why you do this thing to me? Why we you come and you know like let's say you you kill our fathers? Those are the god of this local culture, and then that that tricked me, you know, ten years before on the war zone, and that I realized actually what we see, what we hear, is not true, you know. It is not the soul, it's just the psychological and, you know, environmental layers of information that cover our soul. So that means then that took me, you know, years of working on and that actually then took me to the, the day I born and do the culture, what they try to see, you know, taught us uh, the universal energy. And, and later on, I realized that whole body soul and later on during the research actually soul is soul but later on if if i was born in london according to the culture and society my you know psychological philosophical my emotion will cover up my soul as a layer but whereas the eastern philosophy in the himalayas not enhancing the uh, sense perception the way here thoughts feel but how can we proceed beyond our own human perception by using the mind and the body as a tool. That's the significant impact had on me. And either we liked or not like the outer shell or outer cosmos energy has direct impact on our body, soul, and the energy, then how we manipulate is the uh, very fascinating, Bruce. So, so Chris, can I just can well, I just recap on that story then? So, just to just to get it clear, so you were in was it Afghanistan or, or wherever it was? I can't remember where you said it was. And, and a, a girl held your hand, yes, and she was very upset. And she said, basically, why are you what killing our fathers? Was was that yeah. what it was? Yes, you, and 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 so that made you take a perspective on it. Yes, and then you, you're saying that all of a sudden that you realized that actually um, it was almost like, a, 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 I don't know, an accident of birth, that actually if, if you'd have been growing up there, you would have thought that they were right and correct. And so it's kind of, you're saying it's almost like it just depends who you are and where you grow up. Is, is, is that what you're kind of saying? Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. So basically that, Definitely, either we like it or not like, that's how our body, mind, and all the, you know, like memory exist made up as a human. But I think the important thing is that the, how do you understand that our, basically, I've realized my own perception, my own sensory lied to me, you know. But if I then, if mm. I truly believe on my own vision, on my dream, and stuck on it, then... I'm already heading to the disaster. Bruce, we've had this conversation before, haven't we? It's an interesting one. We've had this about religion, haven't we? And, you know, like you get all these religious wars going on. But it's like, I remember us talking about this. It's almost like an accident of birth. You know, if we'd have grown up in, say, like, a you know, an Eastern kind of Muslim country, you know, we would have been born into the Islamic faith. And if, 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 you know, people in, say, Saudi Arabia or Pakistan or whatever had grown up in the UK, they would have been born up in the Christian faith. And it's just like, it's almost like an accident of birth, these beliefs and ideologies, isn't it? Well, yeah, but that's where you come back to the, 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 fundam the, the fundamentals of, of, all, of, of, of all religions. Um, that they, they all start with a belief that there is a, a uh, there is a, a an individual soul mm. that there's something within uh within our body within our bodies i mean you know i mean a yeah. body's a transient thing but there's something eternal mm. within everybody that is a form of energy it's an existence it might it might be an identity but maybe not even as much of as much as an identity, because an identity implies an opinion, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, left, right, black, mm. white, you know, something like that. But but a soul is 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 less than that, but so much more. Yeah, yeah. kind of transcendent, isn't yeah. it? You know, yeah. so in its initial pure state. And most religions also come back to the point that that we're corrupted by in you know if, by original sin. If you're a 
uh, if, if you're a Christian or a Catholic or whatever, or buy other things with other religions. But basically, it's th the world corrupts the soul. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think it was Buddhism, get, get me wrong, but that this, you, you, what you were describing, Buddhism is, is the idea of the soul is like an, it's like an, the body's like an onion. And, and somewhere in the middle of it is the soul, and you have to peel away all the layers of stuff that have built up um, in order to get back to the the the, the essence, um, you know. And and that's the that's and that would that be the state approaching the the, the ultimate state in in Buddhism, which is which is Nirvana, which is which is basically w oneness with the creator with the universe, whatever that looks like. Bruce, so far in this, just, just a little bit of trivia. I don't know why I picked this up. So far in this podcast, you have mentioned two other rock bands, Nirvana and Genesis. So I'm going to... And you've also mentioned the title of my album. Which is? Quick plug. Accident of Birth. <laughs> <laughs> there are hidden, there, folks, there are hidden messages in this podcast as well. If you play it backwards, you're going to hear all yeah. kinds of, all kinds of <laughs> shit in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that yes. probably, <laughs> knowing our luck, Bruce, that will probably mean something if somebody <laughs> plays that backwards, knowing our luck. Yeah, that, that. yeah it, will, it will. Well, there's a funny story on that. You know, we did a backwards message on one of our, one of our albums. I didn't, no. No, I didn't. Oh, yes, we did. Oh. We did. We did. We did. And it's a long, convoluted story. So what happened was, <laughs> obviously, the uh, the conservative, uh, some of the conservative nutcases, yeah. uh, uh, you know, l ladies who lunch who yeah. didn't have much better to do, were, were imagining that, that, that children were playing all their records backwards and getting satanic messages from them. Right. Um, so, so we thought this was so funny. We thought we'd, um, we'd, 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 we'd put one on. So at the end, we put we put a real backwards message on. So we thought, well, what could we do? And our drummer was was mucking around in the studio, and um, he was telling some terrible jet. There was a, a comedian called John Bird, BBC comedian, right. and you know, like so, ex Oxbridge, blah yeah. blah blah. And there was a very unsavoury African um, politician uh, dictator called. You may remember him, Idi oh, Amin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, yeah, very unpleasant yeah. chap. Um, uh, but but also completely barking yeah. mad in his own way. So when all the Ugandan uh, cabinet slowly began to disappear one by one, and obviously taken off and like fed to crocodiles or whatever he did with them, um, but his explanation for it was um, that they had been abducted by aliens. Right. Okay. So, so John Bird did every every week did a um, uh, a fake version of Idi Amin explaining what had happened to the latest cabinet member who disappeared, yeah. and he did it in the silly fake Af African accent. Yeah. So Nico was rather tickled by by this. And um, in the in the in the sketch, this is a long story, but but it gets to the point. Um, so in in the sketch, at one point, the 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 Idi Amin, in the BBC version of Idi Amin, is describing how you know the the the, the spaceship comes and lands down uh, on, on the ground, and then the the, the ramp drops, and um, and then Idi Amin says, and then out come the man. Out come the alien. Fwatu, <laughs> said the man with the three bonces. Not a bad impression, that, by the way, to be fair. Fwatu, <laughs> said the man with the three bonces. And so Nico had taken this on as part of his thing. So he, he, could, he would wander around talking for, to himself, going, Fwatu, <laughs> said the man with the three bonces. Right? Wow. Um, so we, 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 we sat him down on a stool and put a microphone in front of him and said, Nico, could you say that? And then afterwards, in the same silly accent, say, don't meddle with things you don't understand. <laughs> and so he said, what who said the thing with the tree bonces? Don't meddle with things you don't understand. <laughs> and then we just turned it backwards. And what happened then? I mean, did people actually decode it? <laughs> Nobody gave a shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that just goes to show, doesn't it? So, uh, Chris, going yeah. back, listen, going back, we've been we as as you're going to learn on this podcast, we get distracted by all kinds of <laughs> little okay. things, and we go down <laughs> rabbit holes, right, left, and right, left, and centre. So, listen, bringing it back, I think you was 19. You'd say yeah. you join the Gurkhas, yeah. or you apply to join the Gurkhas. There's a selection process for this, isn't there? So, why? What made you decide? to join the Gurkhas. This is a big step, yeah, isn't it? This is a very big step. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I think um, in in the culture of sort of society I've grown up, especially in the Himalayas, we I realized we're living in our mom and dad dreams. So before yeah. I even born, when I was in the mom womb, my dad and, and my mom dream was they want me to join the Gurkhas. Because uh, right, because uh, that's why I think if you're looking in our life, each every bit and each individual life or soul, so we call, it's been already caving path away by someone else and by society for us what to be in the future. Mm. But uh, yes, the then again, my mom and dad be, wants to me to join the Gurkhas before I even born. And then I realized that is my mom and dad dream, not my dream. But having said that, the society in the mm. Himalayas, British Gurkhas, is a highly decorated, is highly respected. Sure. So in hands, you know, they want to be always our he- human perspective. From my mom and dad perspective, they want to enhance in fi- financial, emotional, psychological, and both identity, you know, identify themselves as a successful. So, so Chris, not to trivialise it, not to trivialise it, is it like, it, I'm trying to get my head around it, is like joining the Gurkhas, like, you know, it's your mum and dad's dream and it's, you know, the big thing. Is it a little bit like, you know, over in the West, over here in, 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 in England, I'm in Australia, obviously, but is it like, you know, like the dream is like your son plays for Manchester United or, you know, something like that? Is it kind of like yeah. this? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It is. And it still is. It's been going for, you know, 200 years plus. In fact, 208 years, the uh, Nepalese yeah. Gurkha have been joining and the Queens and serving for the uh, you know, UK, uh, like 208 years. So it has been and it is. So basically, yes, the answer for you is, uh, in the short term, is yes, I were, uh, I was chosen from my mom and dad and I'm actually still living in my mom and dad dreams. And the, that's... Um, yeah, okay. So, but, you know, but it is, we have, once I grown up and once I realize what my life and what is my true soul wants, then there is opportunity to change someone else's dream and to to be yourself, to be connect with your soul, yeah. a soul. And interesting, the only way to realize and change the way you want it to your connect with your soul is to understanding yourself and how the universe energy mm-hmm. and transform and seeing yourself out body, because. Now you can know that my body and my mind is already programmed through the subtle, you know, phase of the, uh, you know, like the way I grown up, way the my mom and dad has dreamed. So yes, that is that's what I realized. Yeah. That's you were living your mom and dad's you you were living your mom and dad's dream to to start off with. Yeah. Yes, Bruce. You know, I'll tell you, Chris. Chris was telling me. We had um, we had um, lunch a few weeks ago when I was back in England. He was telling me I had no idea of this, but you being a historian, you, you might well know this. But if not, you, you find it quite interesting. So the British, Chris, I think I'm I'm writing saying there was an Anglo Nepalese war back in I think it was like the 1800s or something between the British and the East Indian Company, um, and there were all these border skirmishes, Bruce, between like a China and, and Nepal, I think it was, wasn't it? And the, the British mm-hmm. were British were fighting on the border. And the British were fighting. Now, Chris, you can tell the story better. They, they were fighting these little fellas, these little fellas who were defending their villages, and they were defending their villages with great vigor and determination. Isn't that right? And, 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 I would imagine them. I, I would imagine we, I would imagine they made a mess of it. Well, they much, did, didn't they? And, much, yeah. and, and I think Chris, you were saying. <laughs> And I think Chris was saying that something like the British had said, well, actually, these little fellas are quite good. We want them on our side. Is that right, Chris? Is that yeah. how it all started? The Gurkhas yeah, joined the absolutely. British Army? Absolutely. That is the, you know, like in a good way of putting together. So 
Yes, as a part of, you know, enhancing the from British being, you know, India and they come to the Himalayas and the, as a way of, you know, uh, on the process and the, and they obviously British found us as Nepalese guys from the Himalayas very tough and then we weren't giving up. And then, then they're on the ground, the British commander, and then they, they said, right, why don't we become friends? And then since that day, which is the 1815, 1816, and we were signed with the British Armed Forces, then we are still, you know, since that day, we are uh, friends, if so, still now. You still carry uh, this oh. rather remarkable weapon, don't you? The Kukri knife. Yes, we are. And I have actually a few with me right now here. <laughs> you have one? Yeah. I've, I've got one on my shelf. Have oh, you? wow. Have you? Go and yeah. get it. I'll just go, go and, and, go and, and get, get it. it. Oh, get wow. It. So this was, this was my, my daughter's boyfriend, who's, who's Mexican. Um, he just turned up and he said, I, I, I got this as a present for you because I do Western-style fencing and I have a small collection of uh, of of weapons going back a few hundred years and sort of thing. But anyway, yeah, there we are. That's Kukri knife. Yeah, it's it quite, is. It is, old. yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's that a real one. Amazing. That's a real one, yeah. That's a real one. And you can tell it's a real one because the... I'll step Careful, back Bruce. You'll so almost have my eye out there, one, mate. Because, <laughs> because the, it's... The, honestly, this is so beautifully weighted and balanced. Um, you could, as soon as you pick up something like this, you go, "Oh, that's real. That's designed. That's designed to be used." Yeah. Yes. You know, it's not yeah. designed as an ornament. It's not for chopping melons. It's elegant. You know, it's uh, so you immediately sort of. I have a, an affinity for it. I, I give people. I give people. Um, you know, when they look at the, some of the swords I've got around, and I say, "Okay," I said, "So, pick that one up." And they go, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, now pick that one up. And they went, oh, wow, wow, that's so different. I said, yeah, they're 120 years apart mm -hmm. in age. Wow. But they look the same. But the difference is that one is designed to be used mm. and the other one is designed to be an ornament. The bottom wow. line, Chris, you know, the bottom line is yeah. you don't want to break into Bruce's house. Okay, at night. <laughs> okay, because the, the reaper. Well, no, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a loony. I don't sleep with them under the bed. I'm not. I'm not sort of like a paranoid nutcase. I've heard this story that when Gurkhas take the cookery out, they have to draw blood with it. This is a tradition. Is this? Is this true? Yeah, that is actually true. When you know, like now, you know, it's 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 a, we 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 shoot two cookeries one is for the like walking day to day and going on the like kind of you know war zone and one is for the decoration you know when we uh you know do the duties in buckingham palace like ceremonial cookeries yes mm. yeah but, but do, do you use the cookery um in the field for uh would you like a cookie like that which is not a ceremonial one that's a, that's a tool I mean, do you use it um, as a as a tool? In which case, I mean, I, I can imagine sort of like lots of Gurkhas wandering around with like great scarification lines if they take it out every day and they have to <laughs> slice a piece off. I mean, I, it, it always seemed to me like a bit a, a, a bit weird, you know. That, you know, I used to be a Gurkha. How do you know? Oh, chop, 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 chop. chop you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. um, it, it, do you in the field? Do you actually use that? Would you use that for skinning an animal or doing something else like that? Or would you would you only keep it for? Chopping up. No, absolutely. Yes, yeah, absolutely, Bruce. We use because it is actually very common uh, weapon tools we use in Nepal for daily life. I think that is, you know, like that is a man purpose. It's designed, I don't know, you know, like thousand years before, you know, in the Himalayas. But later on, we Gurkhas took as our personal weapon when we became the became the Gurkhas because that's the tool and cookery we use to, you know, our body and, you know, like mind how it's work and which angle and what, how it's designed. It's actually quite science, scientific uh, behind that. And yes. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's what I thought. I th it, this is a really beautiful design. It, you know, you could, you could chop a tree down Absolutely, with it. Yeah. You know, you could dig something out. You could, you know, you could butcher an animal with it. Uh, you know, it 
chop it up for meat and use it. You know, it's a really, mm. a really useful thing, you know. Chris, it's, it strikes me that the, the more I talk to you, it seems to me that, you know, after this amazing career in the British military, Gurkhas and then special forces, um, you are on a voyage of self-discovery, which is kind of taking you back to your roots, your childhood, your boyhood in, in, in the Himalayas. Now, there's going to be, and already in my mind, I can see there's quite a few conflicts here. So, for example, so the idea of the little girl holding your hand and saying, why are you, why are you doing these bad things? So to your mind, you're fighting an enemy. In her mind, you're killing her father. I would imagine that as a soldier, if you if you start thinking in terms of, well, truth is, you know, what is truth, et cetera, et cetera, that can get in the way of thinking clearly. And you can then, that could be quite a dangerous, conflicting mindset. I mean, it, what do you think about that? I mean, could, if you're in a battlefield and you're fighting an enemy, you have to kind of do your job, don't you, I suppose, and, 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 and defend and, 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 you know, the, 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 the cause that you're fighting for. Absolutely, Kevin. It's a very, very uh, good question, in fact. And, and I've been thinking about this one a few years back. And the important, yeah. uh, the important thing for us is that the, we, there's always a reason and why, why, we are, why we are there. First of all, you know, like, you know, my, for me, it's everything is for my family, my emotion, my love, and where they, and my country and my pride, you know. So for us, for me to survive and for, for, for my family and for my country, for the reason I'm here is because of the Queens, because of my service as a Gurkhas. I am a soldier first. My life is a soldier. I'm here to serve. And that mm -hmm. that allow me that allow me to my my family my my mom and father to be you know in their place as in happily and then to protect them and as as a man if you're looking to like not like thousand years if you look at like thousand thousand years of you know humanity or how the human come up and we are here to today with this scientific discoveries and all the you know like um, you know yeah today is that mm. to protect to protect our entity to protect ourselves mm. if we don't protect ourselves in our core being to if you could then protect your boundaries and your you know countries in order to protect your for the future generation to enhance their perception so many ways scientific resource cultural resource music you know, psychologic, I think we have to protect ourselves. That give me the reason, mm. that give me the true purpose is I am a soldier and I'm serving. That will mitigate mm. any of my negative or any cloudy vision I have to be, to be there. In a way, actually help me, help me to understand how the mind, mind, body and soul needs in a way also, very interesting thing I realized is during this my own research is no matter what the my culture, my grown up, my you know like my family emotion and my life will never be apart. Either we like it or not like mm. that is life. We we are here today. So the only way to only way to enhance and understanding that is truly being yourself, and then almost. You understand so much, you couldn't find yourself. That means the only way yeah. to, you know, show your love and show you protect your family and your loved one and country is that then you are almost not there. So that means I'm already dead in a way. So that is the, actually, mm. that is the culture and society of the Himalayas to teach you, you know, Everything you do for others, everything you do for your country or the vision or the love, whatever, the music or science or, you know, driving, anything you do, as long as that became our life, our soul, there is no such thing to divide you in between you, Kevin. Okay. So, so you came over, I mean, you joined the Gurkhas at 19, Chris, and you presumably you then came over from 
the Himalayas in Nepal to the United Kingdom. So you were in the Gurkhas and then, and then you went one step further. And so then you tried to uh, join the Special Air Service, this legendary British Special Forces Regiment. Uh, and you went for selection and you became, am I right in saying the first Gurkha to pass SAS yeah, selection? Yeah, one of the first from the Royal Gurkha Rifles, yeah. One, yeah. one of the first? Yeah. O- yeah. Okay. And I mean, that, I mean, so Bruce, I've been doing this, I've been doing a bit of research on these Gurkhas. And first of all, it's, you, you've got, re- when you come from these Himalayan villages, you've got regional selection and you've got to do a load of physical tests. And then you do a central selection, mate. And then you, if you pass that, then you're into the Gurkha regiment. Now, apparently you've got a 3% chance of passing Gurkha selection from, from the minute you come down from the hills and, and do the regional selection to finally joining the Gurkhas. 3% of people um, uh, pass that. Statistically, it's actually easier to get into the SAS than it is to get into the Gurkhas from scratch. And here we've got a guy that's not only got into the Gurkhas, he's then become one of the first Gurkhas to, to join the SAS. And I think you went then into, there's different troops in the SAS, isn't there, Chris? And you went in, it was, well, obviously you went into mounted yes, troops, didn't you? I was, yeah. So there's four troops, aren't there? Explain how it works. So basically, yes, when I was Gurkhas, uh, the one of my uh, CEO by then was, why the none of the Gurkhas in, in the, you know, SF by then from, it's, 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 yeah, especially from, from the Royal Gurkha Rifles, from the Rifles. And then the... Sure. And then they yeah. said like, okay, let's send the, you know, for guys from the, you know, regiment, Gurkha regiment, let's send on the trial, see how the Gurkhas does, because we think we are the best on the ground fighting soldiers. That's history. So, and then, then, <laughs> uh, second day, one of my OC, officer commanding, pulled me on the office and I was like, I was like shaking, like, oh my God, what I have done wrong. Because normally if you, as a Gurkha young boy, if you call, call, if you call to the, you know, OC officer commanding office, you know, like you have done something wrong. And then he called me. Yeah. He called me and said, right. Oh, Chris, we, we're gonna, we're gonna send the first trial, the first trial Gurkha bears from Royal Gurkha Rifles to the, you know, SS selection. So you are one of, you are one of, one of them, so we're gonna pull you, you know, send you on a selection. So I think they, the, I think the story is going back again, Sam. Again, I think the it's more than, you know, more than anything is the environment, and then the, you know, like I've been, you know, mm. showing the pathway from, you know, like all my universal, I guess, you know, like my OC been told you, I we're gonna have to send you to do the selection because. You know, you, I am one of the you know strongest guys from the company by then. And then also when it come to the obviously you know as a process of the selection, then I I because I generally thought I, I'm I'm from Himalayas, Nepal, and they they said oh mountain troop you know air troop and boat and you know other. And I said like oh I'm from Nepal, I'm gonna go and do the choose the mountain troop. And also as mm. a mountain troop, you know we are more sort of hands on. We have to climb, we have to fix, we have to in it with the body and mind, but we are using more sort of feeling perspective of our body in the mind, not as such the air which we have to vision and wisdom, not seeing on the ground, but you need to land on a specific ground in the midnight. So anyway, if you really are digging what is going on here on the podcast, don't forget that you can get a double shot of it on Patreon. Uh, dot com forward slash psycho schizo espresso and that'll take you to the link where you can just make a little bit of a subscription and you can get all the unedited stuff um, that we thought was too scary to put in the actual show so there you go so you can become a patreon and support us in our efforts to um i don't know um irrigate your mind enlighten people i suppose yes. well if you want yeah. all the uncut unedited, unfiltered stuff. Basically us prattling on, just like we do on here, but uh, without any limitations at all. Yes. As Bruce says, folks, uh, jump on Patreon and uh, we'll see you on the other side.
that just brings me to the 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 the, the next thing, which is the fascination that Western cultures have for Nepal mm. and for the whole. Have region. you been there, Bruce? Um, uh, no, I've never no, been there. No. Uh, I, I actually, I actually, at one point, the the airline I was working for, when I was working for it, we were looking at doing flights into, um, well, it would be Kathmandu, mm-hmm. wouldn't it, with the, the airport. Um, so we, we were looking at doing flights in there in a 757 for a, 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 a local company. Um, as you know, from from wherever I think, I guess from London or from somewhere like that. Um, and we we were looking at it in the simulator, and it was quite an interesting uh, approach because obviously high altitude mountains, everything else, you know, it's um it's quite a tricky little thing. Uh, <laughs> but it never happened. Um, so, but you know, it, it, everything from from I'm not sure if Batman ended up in Nepal. Um, but I think he did at the beginning. I think he was trained by, you know, like kind of like uh, m- warrior monks, Batman mm. in the in the Batman mm. movies, you know, and he, he emerged out of there. Recently, they've been re-showing this very rather rather ludicrous but quite amusing um, show on TV, daytime TV, called The Champions, oh, yeah. which yeah. was in the 60s. Yeah which was three people who crash in Tibet yeah. and are modified to become superhumans by the monks that live in a civilization that nobody can find because they just can't be bothered yeah. to be bothered with the world anymore. But for some reason, they modify these people with superpowers of hearing and strength and yeah. off they go to do good. They're telepathic and blah, blah, blah. And, of course, you get the bad guys, which is you know, the, the Nazis, who were obsessed mm. with Nepal and sent uh, because they thought that the Aryan race, like, lived on top mm. of mountains. And guess who lived yeah. on top of mountains? Well, the Nepalese. So somewhere up there must be the evidence that, you know, that the Nazis were descended from people who lived on top of mountains and then that would justify their yeah, lunacy, yeah, yeah. you know, but, but, but there's, we have a succession of, of, of waves of cultural fascination hmm. um, as if there's something secret up there in yeah. the mountains. I mean, even going back to the hippie trail, I mean, that <laughs> ended in Nepal, wasn't it? You know, the yeah. journey to Kathmandu yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in the sixties as well. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's up there? What's up there, Chris? Is there something, is, is there something fantastic and secret? Yeah, absolutely, there? Kevin and Bruce, you need to go to Himalayas. But I think one of the thing I, you know, like, I ask this question myself so many times because uh, what I realize is the uh, every every one of us is climbing the our own mountain, some shape of different psychological and physical way, anyway. But the you know like mm. both prominently as a as a marker, Everest is the highest on the ground uh, on on the earth at the moment, because like I said before. Mm. Because of from the sea level to highest uh, kind of uh, m- marking point on Earth, that has the certain level of energy, you know, filtering and energy has directly effect on our body and mind. What I realized when I when I led the mm-hmm. you know like biggest uh, UKSF and then the Gurkhas Everest in 2013, uh, 2017 is still the Guinness World Record summited uh, Everest. Uh, when I was on the summit of Everest, what I realized is that the our body, our mind, in a different state of the surrounding conducive environment, that will realize us, you know, whatever we think we are, whatever we think we inherited biologically, silos, you know, like a chemical, all this uh, energy through our ancestor, we can actually cut away and became you. You know, became true you, and mm. that's the. And the, we can't learn. We can't, you know, put uh, with the academic identity. We can't do that. The only way to realize your life beyond, you know, like energy level, atmospheric level through the pressure is that is the process. We have to put our body and mind in that environment. That is the very thing I realized mm. that the. Yeah, I think, and all, hence, if you look at all the monk, all the gurus, 
all the spiritual culture societies actually come from the Himalayas of Nepal, up in the Himalayas. There is still a hundred thousand of people giving up their life and spending, you know, in the cave to find out true, true self. Mm. Do you know, Chris, I've, I've, I know, you know, quite a few um, people in, um, who've served in special forces and I know Hereford well. There's a lot of very different characters in that regiment um, from very, very different backgrounds um, and none more, none more different than you. I mean, did you did you fit in well? Did you enjoy your time? Uh, in, I, I in loved Hereford? it every moment, and still I am. And um, to be honest, Kevin, it's probably the one of the best thing happened for 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 me in my life. Boys from Himalayas, mm. not any academic education, no school at all, joining the Gurkhas. My mom and dad mm. dream. I keep my mom and dad dream life. And I come to the Gurkhas UK and mm. I've been, you know, fortunate and honored to serve for the Queens and especially the, you know, uh, Hayford. Every, my life actually changed. Yeah. And because of that, to be honest, only reason I'm here to realize who I am is the, you know, community and culture the SAS taught me. If I wasn't in the regiment, I don't think I would yeah. ever find myself who I am. You know, that, yes. Really? And that okay. is the culture and society, actually. Uh, for me, when I was in the war zone, there's only the British guy who were pure white from the London or from the Scotland were willing to die for me, you know. There is there is this thing yeah. so much into it, is that a lot of the people current mountain, you know, racism, you black, white. Man, you haven't been, you haven't understand your life so deep enough to living mm. in the superficial perspective life and judgmental life in order to mm. go beyond our suspect uh, in a superficial perspective life we need to touch our soul we need to understand the life and death every moment we bow, born every breath we born every breath we die if we have understanding and respect each other and that understanding res- respect understanding myself actually Hereford, that culture gave me to understand more deeper. I'm fascinated by that because living up to your age 19, effectively as a monk, um, with complete, uh, just at one with uh, a kind of a spiritual regime where you were just in touch with the sun and the moon and dawn and dusk and, you know, the, 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 the whole rhythm of of the universe that surrounded you and yet what you're saying is that being in the the SAS was the thing that really peeled away the layers absolutely, of the onion course, absolutely i think it's fascinating because for me it's, i can put it in a, so many perspective because why is that then i can you know that me gave me the pathway the, from the Himalayas, my spiritual and my, you know, understanding life to open my book and, you know, what I wasn't aware of before. But now being here, being more than, you know, scientific and more, one of the most leading aids of science and the culture and society we are living. And actually, you know, uh, maybe uh, I, I, I ha- I've been very fortunate and honored to realize that, you know, and then to... Uh, to be tapped into that different dimension of who I am and that that gave me and I'm still you know you know I, I'm I'm overwhelmed with this uh, you know my own life and looking back and yeah definitely Bruce. So what have you taken back to the mountains? So from yeah, Hereford? yeah, great question. Great question. Great I mean, it's a shock. Great question. Go, but let, let me go. You go back to your warrior monks in uh, your, your monks in Nepal and go. Let me tell you something. You know that I bet you didn't know. To be honest, it's very interesting, Bruce. Uh, you know, so many, so many layers of understanding I'm taking back. I think the most important thing I'm taking back to the Himalayas now, and I'm teaching my own gurus and my own spiritual teacher in Nepal now what is actually crucial, why you have to keep doing the spiritual path, is that give me the understanding. And I'm actually going back, every time I go to Nepal, I spend the time in cave with the monk. I spend the time with the, you know, the Hindu spirit. I spend the time in the church, 
you know, I think a lot of us forget that, you know, once you realize that death is the one, you know, like we, we are living and dying every moment. And then once you realize that, I think we can change our generation, not only ourselves. In order to change our forthcoming generation, we need to understand the true soul, even though it's hard to find, but it's, we can tap into that. And, and that is the, I find very interesting because last, you know, two months before I was in the Himalayas and I'm sitting with the monk and then the you know, Hindus uh, temple god, what they call, and I was saying and, you know, like doing thing. And because I think for them, it's a different way of perspective being coming here in the UK, Western world, being the Gurkhas in the SF, you know, living in London and going back to them is also the, you know, like value, validation for them to, you know, as a life and as, as a human, I think we need to do our force, not only for us, for our generation to come to understand who we are truly within us. Is there a dark side mm. to, um, to all this? I mean, because obviously your experience has uplifted you. You know, you, you found the experience uplifting and you've taken away good things that, uh, you don't seem to want to, you know, run around and chop people into bits for fun on the street. There are people who, uh, you know, have been in uh, special forces that um, don't survive the real world outside the special forces mentally. Um, they find it hard uh, to reconcile their life, which was, with their future life whatever that may be and who gets to fill those gaps yeah. and, and and are those gaps filled are they even fillable if you don't have the raw material i think to begin absolutely with? bruce i think that's a very very deep question and absolutely i think i mm. think your your question is uh, so much touching for me it's yes i was very fortunate to tap into that understanding myself and where i come from because you know uh because a lot of us uh, have been so much fortunate, but subconsciously, consciously, we don't re recognize that. And second is that the how how in 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 you know like how our mind walk through the philosophical or the Eastern way is that identity is one of the biggest problem. A lot of us, a lot of us, whatever job, whatever status we have. Once you identify with that, or the regiment SS guys, once you identify I am that, then, like I said, we are not in a good position to handle the forthcoming mm. future, whatever means that to be. Minute mm. you identify with one thing, all our academic, all our social, all our emotion, love, is only work to protect the identity. The only way to get out from that identity is that touching beyond your perception, beyond your own memories and own emotion. How can we toss that then? Is the only mm. way to understand, you know, our spiritual path. It's the only way to understand truly who you, who you are. I think that definitely helped me. That's why I connected so much with my past, in a way, you know, like life of understanding myself and overcome that ad through adversity, through the life and death you know, through the every moment definitely helped me, bros. I think, yes, I think that we have got the biggest problem, not only in the resume, but, in a, you know, like if you look at the, you know, the wider world, man is the, you know, percentage is, you know, more than a female. And because we are putting ourselves in that situation so many ways and we can't overcome that situation, not understanding the yourself through shell. Is there a part of you which misses it? Do you miss of it? Of course, Kevin, definitely. Uh, I think yeah. the, but also, you know, what helped me is that the, and uh, not, you know, because the, uh, uh, it is, it is part of me. I can't, you know, it's, we can't forget it's part of my life, but also, you know, understand my understanding, my own self is I need to move on. You know, I need to do, what I love to do. Yeah. I think that gave me, you know, a little bit of kind of understanding of that. Yes, it's been great. And also as a life, we're evolving every second, every moment. And I think I, I have an understanding within myself. I need to move on 
and from this and then that's and all in a ways you know so we call let it go and the, you know that's definitely i missed yeah. it and i still got the really good you know friendship and then guys and i'm still you know be a part but also as a life uh sure. yeah i think i i'm and and yes and no so listen chris you're out you're out of the regiment and you are now running this amazing adventure um travel company um which i guess it kind of taps into again what bruce and i were asking like how do you fill that void how do you fill the gap when you leave uh, something like the SAS. And of course, you're one of the world's top high altitude mountaineers. You're now, you're giving a lot back to people, aren't you? Because you're taking um, uh, veterans, amputees, people with neurodegenerative illnesses, PTSD, I think even blind people, uh, people with Parkinson's, you're taking them up the mountains. Um, and I suppose this is, I mean, this is, absolutely fantastic it it also taps into um you know your your sporting ability because mountaineering is a sport so it, it, it you you're still doing that you're still involved in a physical environment um i mean why are you doing that and 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 also i mean it, bruce it's, it's amazing really because there's i mean you've achieved a couple of world records here haven't you chris so tell us why are you doing it and, and tell us what you've done here yeah i think uh... I think in, in in my life, you know, like as as uh, as we grown up, I think so do we, Bros and Kevin. I think uh, you know, with the, with this, we have so much limited time in this universe. Uh, once you realize that the we can, there is always people who who can guide us. You know, going to a path. There's always people helping here, and always people we can help them to achieve their dream and desire to be better human. And the uh, it's the biggest thing taught me is that the uh, the people who left, especially the veteran service, there's a big, big gap to continue and even they have a dream. And there is, a, especially what I find is those people who are differently able, you know, like amputees and then the blind or PTSD or, or the civilian, you know, like all the Parkinson's guys, not many people who are taking on them because, because obviously the reason is there is they have the limited understanding as a life. And uh, when I start uh, recognizing that, and I start take walking with the, uh, you know, like uh, double amputees, um, and when I start spending time with them, not only I'm I'm helping them to, you know, achieve their dream and desire, but also I am learning so much, which I'm not aware of the situation they are they have been, mm. you know. This is the this is the thing I realized, and then then is I think five years, five or six years ago when we submitted the Mount Blanc, triple three triple three double amputees submitted the Mount Blanc first ever world record, and all all of them were veteran. The the story was they never you know like had opportunity they couldn't come out they never thought they're gonna climb, but somehow we make it, and the and they they. Uh, it 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 gave me the purpose of my life to serve you know in a different way you know to where i love you know mm. outside in nature and finding myself and that's probably the reason you know to help me finding myself and at the same time helping them to achieve their dream i think we need to we need to make sure krish that um that we put up a link mm. to yeah. your uh, ad- adventure company so that not just your people can find yourself so that people can find <laughs> yes, you. Yes, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> that, Absolutely. That on it. That on it. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I think that would be fantastic. Bruce, have you ever, have you ever, have you, oh, is climbing Everest anything, has it ever had any appeal for you? Years ago, I would have gone, uh, yeah, okay. But now I look at Everest and, um, I mean, it's a, it's a sort of a, it's like a car park, isn't it, of people. Just there's just like an endless supply of litter and trash and a few dead people um, uh, on the way up uh, and on the way down. Mm. I think um, I quite like the idea of um, of, of, of of mountains, um, but um, I think people f- climb Everest a lot of the time. I get the impression they climb Everest because it's like an ego thing. 
because they want to say, I conquered that piece of mm. rock. And you don't even need to climb a mountain to have a a, 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 a moment of like, mm. wow, you know, yeah. um, and be touched, be touched by something. I mean, we went during lockdown, mm. um, we managed to f- get ourselves into Tanzania and we spent a few nights uh, in a very, it's a very nice tent, actually. It wasn't really a, a tent, it was, but it was a tent in the Serengeti. So sleeping in the middle of all the wild animals, no protection, nobody with guns, nothing like this, you know. We had some moments mm. where you just like at, at dawn or um, there was an amazing full moon and we were over a, a, a crater, um, big, big uh, um, extinct crater, a volcano, and um, we've got this fabulous picture of me and Liana with this incredible full moon, which is so big. It's like almost just, it's like a comedy full moon. You say, like, mm. that's not real, surely. That's Photoshop. But it was shining across the crater in the lake, and we just you mesmerized by mm. it. But you have a little moment when it's just like, wow, you know. You don't have to go, no. and, but you can get those moments walking across Chiswick High Road, and, and there's, there's stuff everywhere. You know, and that's what you talk about. That's what way. you talk about, isn't it, Chris? I mean, I suppose that brings us right back to where we started, isn't yes. it? It's making connection, making that connection with with yeah. what yeah. I suppose, for want of a better word, yeah. even as a psychologist, yeah. we call Absolutely. the soul. I think the uh, the Bruce is so so valid what you said because um, end of day, wherever we are, war zone or London or house, kitchen or Everest, only way we find is our finding out. When I submitted Everest, I only find myself. I couldn't find anything else. So, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is exactly in, in a certain ego, certain identity take you there, then we are already heading to the wrong direction. If you f- try to go wherever you are, try mm. to go and find yourself, like you say, Kevin, the soul, then that could be fine anywhere. You don't have to climb. You don't have to do anything. Um, but the, you know, like it's absolutely that is a genuine, uh, genuine thing. Bruce, I think you said so, so true. I never thought that a global rock star and a Buddhist monk would have so much in common. But I think that's brought us right back to brought us right back to the beginning, Chris, hasn't it? On that note, we'll leave it, Chris. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, to have you on here really a very very special guest uh, in more ways than one thank you so much mate for your time um and we're going to do our very best to make sure that um the work that you're doing with the with the veterans is continued so thanks mate it's been wonderful it's been a real honor to have you on it thank you thank you kevin and Cambridge bruce i think this is my great honor of meeting you here and then uh, thank you for your support Well, thank you for being with us for another episode of Psycho Schizo Espresso. If you want to become a patron, then please do patreon.com uh, forward slash Psycho Schizo Espresso. And in the meantime, just don't forget if you're watching us on whatever platform, whether it's YouTube or Spotify or whatever, don't forget to just uh, give us a little nudge if you like what we're doing and like us and that way more people will get to hear about it and we can spread the gospel of psycho schizo espresso i think bruce isn't it yeah the gospel Gospel of je ne sais quoi yeah the gospel of psycho schizo espresso folks you won't regret it well you might (laughs) but it'd be too late by then anyway so there you go help us spread help us spread the news yes (laughs) 